Hello and welcome. I am Ben the Best Five, and I'm here with more Kerbal Space Program content. This particular video is, in fact, my third video in my ISS creation video, where I will be sending the um, uh, PS module, which you can see me launching here, on a Soyuz rocket, combined with um, the uh, P1 S. Two and P2, I'm pretty sure the uh, first and second. And hey, there's a cross log cross. But yes, the first three segments of the main truss, the one which attaches to DOS Destiny, and the two which also contain the large radiators, they're all going to be sent up today and attached to my model. Today, I'm also joined again by Paisley, my cat. Uh, so you know, that's nice she likes to join in and yeah, so with this particular launch, uh, he might have noticed that um, one of the fairings didn't fall off properly, that's just KSP being problematic, but nothing much I can do about that, hey it finally flies away. As you can see here, this um, this might resemble quite heavily a um qu might quite heavily resemble a uh soyaz however it, or a progress craft however it's not quite one because the uh, PS module and the module which is docked across from it are actually both um airlocks and docking adapters for things like soyaz spacecraft However, they were in fact launched um, as part of a modified pro so, um, Progress spacecraft. So they were sent up um, basically, yeah, as the, the top section of a um, Soyuz being the the actual module itself, and then a modified supply, uh, uh, well, not resupply, a uh, service module. Um, to take it all the way to the ISS. So here you'll in fact see it circularizing in a minute and be on its way to the ISS. I actually got like a really good launch to the IS to my ISS from here because not only did I launch in essentially the exact perfect um, inclination, I was actually able to uh, come and get you know a encounter with it basically straight off the bat because I basically launched from the exact right spot so I was actually able to come up and dock with it you know really really quickly I did however make one fatal error well not fatal error because I was still able to complete the mission it was just a lot more difficult um, I did not have any RCS aboard however I was able to get close enough with just the engine itself and then from there I was able to uh, simply just use the engine to sorry the uh, magnetic pull of the docking clamps to bring the craft into its home now this is now the actually I think it might be the S0 truss yes I think that might actually be the name for it I did check before I recorded this, but I promptly forgot. Um, and yes, you can see that it has a massively big fairing and a massively big launcher. Now, in reality, this would have all actually been launched inside the bay of a space shuttle, and would have taken up most of the space shuttle's bay. However, one of the small issues which Kerbal Space Program has is not all the parts are to scale. For example, a truly to scale space shuttle would have uh, external fuel tanks built out of five meter parts. However, that is quite frankly not very realistic in the spa scheme of Kerbal Space Program, just because uh, those the five meter parts are actually quite frankly terrible. They have a lot of extra unexplained mass, uh, which isn't related to fuel. Like one day I was like sitting and cost as well because I, I was sitting down and doing some like calculations because you know you just try to work out which part
parts are the most efficient to do stuff with. Turns out that the uh, well, if you can get away with it, it's best to use the 1.5 meter parts. However, if you can't, then it's best to use the 2.5 meter parts and only really use the 3 and 5 meter parts if you have to. Because this is especially true with the uh, 5 meter parts, is that they actually have a ton of extra. Because if you take the amount of fuel right and then subtract it and then divide the um, surface area by the amount of left over weight, the 5 meter parts actually have. I forgot what the actual number was, I recorded it down somewhere and should probably have it up on screen, but I forgot to do that. But it was just like lots more. Lots, lots more. Anyway, we are now in orbit and we will be docking soon. Now, you might have noticed that this thing has a lot of parts and is very structurally unstable, and it also has been placed in a very, very specific orientation and yes, it had very, very, very specific requirements. And I was actually somehow able to manage to do that. It only took me a few goes, and yeah, I had to unlock it and actually make a small adjustment correction and then redock. Just because those I-beams, although they, they do look cool and actually make it look like it's held on the same way that the ISS is held on, they do make docking a lot more difficult. Also you might be able to see that, that my um, P6 truss piece on top of the Z1 truss piece, just below where I'm currently docking, the solar panel, it's actually somehow become glitched and all the parts are um, kind of skew, skewed all over the place. So to fix that in the future, I in fact might uh, completely undock it, get rid of it and give it a new one which isn't, doesn't, isn't broken and doesn't have completely messed up um, radio panels as well because in my last video I actually broke one of the radio panels and the only realistic way I could fix it is either by hacking the craft files themselves or by replacing it. So at some time when I'm assembling the main uh, truss structure with the solar panels, I'll add it in. Anyway, here you can see me attaching the next piece uh, of the integrated truss structure. You might have noticed that there was no launch. That is because I in fact cheated it to orbit. Uh, not because I couldn't have done it, I could have used the exact same launch vehicle that I used before. It's just, well you saw how, how easy that was to launch, where it was dr dripping and drooping and like it didn't look so bad on the actual screen, but when I was actually flying it, it's actually got hundreds and hundreds of parts to get the exact shape and to get the um, um, uh, truss in the middle and stuff to all, all work correctly. So yeah, as a result, I actually decided that although I could have done it, just simply for the sake of my personal frustration and ability to, you know, be able to function as a human being and because, well, basically it was going to be quite difficult and I didn't want to because look I, I don't need to make excuses for myself I, I have my reasons I, I stated them it was really flimsy and it was quite difficult and quite annoying so I figured since the purpose of this series is to um, you know build a repair ISS I figured why not plus I have used cheats before in this series uh, for things like the P6 truss where lifting it was quite frankly impossible just simply because of the structural integrity of the robotic parts they in my first video you should go watch that by the way if you haven't it, it, it it's just more beautiful content to watch as I assemble an ISS well in that um, that was just simply it was physically impossible to lift that because the um, 
the uh, robotic parts just simply flipped out or lost control and then caused um, well they, they just clipped straight through the fairing got hit by air resistance and absolutely pulled my craft sideways in whatever direction it felt like and control was lost and as for that reason I just simply it was not possible even with auto strut it just ignored that so because of that I had to cheat with that one and as a result I don't feel particularly bad like and plus you know doing it in that way meant that I could fit an extra module in because I was originally going for three but you know I figured four would be better anyway thank you for watching I really do hope you enjoyed if you'd like to see me change anything about my content let me know a comment if you just want to say hi let me know a comment I'll I respond to those anyway if you do want to see more of this you know see more of my content or see a series till its end then click subscribe otherwise hit the like if you enjoyed and thank you for watching I hope you have a great day